Funding provided by Fairway Meat and Grocery is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls State Volleyball Championships. Fairway believes in supporting the places Iowans learn, work, live, and play. Congratulations to all the schools and student-athletes in this year's games. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Welcome to a live look inside the Alliant Energy Powerhouse in downtown Cedar Rapids, where we have handed out the 5A, the 4A, the 3A, and the 2A team titles for the Iowa Girls High School State Volleyball Tournament. One more championship left to be played, and it is the smallest schools, the 1A, and Barb Randall joining me, Eric Braley, for this one. It's been a long day. Uh, we've seen some great volleyball. Why are you excited for this matchup, Barb? Well, I love this. These two teams are relative unknowns in the state finals, so it should be really fun to see who can get past those nerves and those jitters and who can come out and just take it to them. Neither of these teams have been to this spot before, so let's take a look at Burlington Notre Dame so you can get familiar with them. First ever trip to state, and boy, are they making the most of their opportunity. They started the season under quarantine for the first two weeks, and they have some outstanding players. We'll talk about Gabby Deary and some of her teammates there uh, for this team. And the their opponent is Gladbrook Rhinebeck, the Rebels in Northeast Iowa. It's their third trip to state and some outstanding players, uh, one of which is going to be playing college volleyball at the next level. Their head coach, real unique story here, was on the 1988 team that was state runner-up. Last time they were in this state championship game was when she was a player 32 years ago. Let's go to the public address announcer down on the court. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union's Golden Plaque of Distinction Award is given annually to an Iowa coach who has demonstrated a successful career while making notable contributions towards school, community, and the coaching profession. Presenting this year's Golden Plaque Award is IGHSAU Executive Director Gene Berger and Volleyball Administrator Lisa Brinkmeyer. The recipient of this year's Golden Plaque Award in volleyball is Shelley Sorensen of Janesville. Shelly has been the head coach for Janesville for 30 years, and this is her 34th season of coaching overall. She was the head coach at Denver for four years before returning home to Janesville, from which she graduated from in 1982. In her 30 seasons at Janesville, Shelly has compiled a career record of 724, 292, and 37. She has taken teams to state for the last 11 consecutive years, and in that span, Janesville has won five state championships with one runner-up finish. She's been named the IGCA Regional Coach of the Year nine times, IGCA Coach of the Year five times, and was nominated for the Iowa Girls Coaches Association's National Coach of the Year in 2017. She was also the NFHS Iowa Volleyball Coach of the Year for the 2018-2019 school year. Shelley has served as Janesville's head softball coach for 29 years. Her daughter Dana is her assistant coach for both softball and volleyball. Shelly's been married to husband Merle for over 30 years and has two children, Dana and Andrew, two stepchildren, and four grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the 2020 recipient of the IGHSAU Volleyball Golden Plaque of Distinction from Janesville, Shelly Sorensen. The record speaks for itself. 729 career wins in 30 years at Janesville, five championships, one runner-up, and 11 years straight to the state tournament. Oh, and by the way, coaches softball as well for 30 <laughs> plus years, incredible. That's a lot of energy she needs to have. <laughs> Congratulations on the Golden Plaque Award. Fans, it's time to meet our teams. First, welcome to the floor, the Burlington Notre Dame Nikes.
And now your home team on the scoreboard, the Gladbrook Rhinebeck Rebels. Fans, it's now time to introduce the players and the coaches in tonight's championship match. First, for Burlington, Notre Dame. Number nine, Maddie Mozina. Number 10, Kerrigan Belger. Number 13, Molly Johnson. Number 21, Taryn Steffens. Number 26, Lauren Krieger. Number 32, Kenna Westlake. The assistant coaches, Susan Reed, Julie Belger, and Megan Steffens. Now for the starters. Number four, Josie Bentz. Number eight, Gabby Deary. Number 12, Jenna Bentz. Number 16, Katie Steffens. Number 22, Macy Belger. And number 31, Abby Korshigan. Number 15 is your lead role, Carly Artman. The head coach, Mike Davis. Now let's meet the Gladbrook Rhinebeck Rebels. Number two, Ashlyn Moore. Number seven, Stella Heinzel. Number nine, Ryland Bergman. Number 11, Brehan Duberke. Number 12, Stephanie Kehoe. Number 13, Paige Cresswell. Number 14, Maya McLean. Number 15, Abby Sinknet. The assistant coach is Chris Keel. Now for your starters. Number three, Emma McClintock. Number four, Siri Keel. Number five, Mahala Olson. Number six, Ava Wyatt. Number 10, Katie Clark. Number 17, Megan Cooley. The libero is number 20, Alyssa Morgan. The head coach is Paula Kelly. Your referees for this evening's match are one, Jenny Malsam. R2, Jean Statlander. The line judges are Ted Mosier and Nikki O'Keefe. Are you ready? All right, that's the look at both teams' rosters. Barb, let's take a look now at your keys to the match, and let's start with Burlington Notre Dame under first-year head coach. First time he's coached any school, <laughs> let alone Burlington and they're playing for a state title. Yeah, he needs to quit after this year. <laughs> but their keys are they need to jump out quickly. Both teams are in the same boat with not a lot of experience in the finals or even at state. So starting quickly will kind of help calm the nerves. And then they need to play big. On the roster, they are a lot bigger than Gladbrook Rhinebeck. And so if they can carry themselves with that confidence and that big player disposition, that can really be intimidating. And as you get going through the game, the Rebels might forget about that a little bit. So they really need to make sure they're carrying themselves huge. And for Gladbrook Rhinebeck, what's it going to take? Again, they need to lose the jitters fast. Neither team has been to this game. And so, you know, jitters may be a factor. So they just need to play the Rebel game and keep their confidence to build on it. And then they de need to defend in the back row. The old saying is true. Defense wins championships. With tough defense, they can force the other team to make a bunch of errors. That's Barb Randall, the All-American at the University of Iowa, the Iowa girl from Comanche, and the Iowa High School Girls Hall of Fame, and a former Division I assistant coach at UNI and Purdue. The first point goes to Burlington Notre Dame. Let's go to our net camera mounted above the net. And you can see right away, a nice strong play, getting a good attack for that first lead. A good serve gets Gladbrook Rhinebeck a little bit out of sorts. 
And now that set sails over the net, and we are tied at one to one. Well, in that set, maybe a little bit of those jitters. She just gets the ball a little bit too tight, actually, over the net, and her player can't do anything with it. Serving so important in the game of volleyball, and you can tell from the early going, they're really attacking behind that service line. Well, it really is your first area of throwing something at them, and so if you can if you can be good at it and, and get tough serves, you can really take the team the other team out of their offense, and that can start just a snowball of bad things happening for your opponent. A lollipop of a serve. The setter has so many options with a good pass of yeah. what she can do offensively, who to set up. But if you're in scramble mode, just right. trying to do anything in your power to return the serve, then you're in trouble. Two to two is our score in the opening set. If you're new to the high school volleyball game, they played a 25, win by two, and the first team to win three sets or three games, they win the match, and they are your Class 1A champion. Blocked. Burlington Notre Dame returns it, and that one's down for another point. So far, point for point, you know, it'll be interesting to see if one of the teams can kind of pick pick themselves away from the other team a little bit here. Nice swing, middle of the court. Only one blocker up, so she has a lot of angles she can use. Little miscommunication. A couple players ran into each other in the back row. And a good attack there by Gabby Deary. She is a sophomore, and she led the team with 257 kills of 305 kill efficiency and 4.28 kills per set. Eye-popping numbers for the underclassmen for Burlington Notre Dame. Well, and it's really interesting because Burlington Notre Dame has had quite a few changes happen throughout their season. You mentioned in the open that they they had to start late because of, of COVID rules and quarantining and that kind of thing. But they got twin sisters to transfer from a school in Illinois. Monmouth, Illinois. And they weren't allowed to play. The union hadn't accepted them or I, I don't know what the process was, but they didn't get to play until October 6th on senior night. So most of the season, they've had a different lineup than what we're seeing here tonight. I'll throw another wrench in. First year head coach. Yeah. So everything's new. Yeah, exactly. They have a new head coach and then uh, one of their players is out and then you have a couple new players come in. Who, and then... who actually play and make a big difference. That, Correct. That's a big part of it. So as you know, Barb, with all your years of playing sports, dealing with adversity, keeping a calm, cool, collected attitude and kind of <laughs> rolling with it and getting hot at the right time, yeah. like in Cedar Rapids. Well, that's one of the things I love about the state tournament is you could have zero wins throughout your season. You still get a chance to play in the playoffs to make it to state. So you could have like three wins when you get to state and, and still be in the tournament. I just love that. Everybody gets a chance. It's what you do with that opportunity that's in front of you. And right now, Burlington Notre Dame and Gladbrook Rhinebeck have a prime opportunity to win a state title here in Class 1A. Burlington Notre Dame getting a bit of separation here up three, and that's the second kill. As you see the replay there for Josie Bentz. And Josie Bentz does a really nice job that time of making it look like she's going to hit it and then at the last minute changing her arm and tipping. Kind of like a change up in baseball. You want it to look like the same pitch is coming at you and then at the last minute she changes it and tips it right over that block. Powerful kill for Megan Cooley, the sophomore middle hitter for Gladbrook Rhinebeck and that'll send Emma McClintock to serve. Gladbrook Rhinebeck is wearing the blue tops. The light tops with dark sleeves is Burlington Notre Dame. Three kills now for number four, Josie Bentz. Well, and a lot of them are coming from tips. I would be surprised if Gladbrook Rhinebeck doesn't make some changes to, to take those and get them to the center more easily. They shouldn't be falling. 
Back set and a good swing for Cooley. GR gets it quick set that time. Here's Burlington. GR again, and they like to work the middles. You gotta love that. As a former middle blocker, <laughs> I'm all about setting those middles. Why are those so high percentage uh, attacks there? Well, they're high percentage because a lot of times they're quicks, and so the setter just puts the ball right in the middle's hand, and unless they're too tight to the net and hit right into the blocker, if they stay off the net, they have a lot of angles they can use. Service air, and it's now 9-6 on the side out. There is Bence to serve. And when we talked about those Bence twins coming from Monmouth, Illinois in early October, obviously making a, a nice difference into the Burlington Notre Dame lineup here. Yeah, wouldn't you love to get twins who actually make a difference? That would be great, especially for a first year coach. And fitting into the culture and just uh, accepting their role. Well, and we talked about this being Burlington Notre Dame's first trip to state. They usually, in their um, on their path to state, run into Holy Trinity out of Fort I've Madison. I've heard of them. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're kind of a perennial powerhouse here at state, and so it's usually between those two teams. Well, you get a couple twins transfer in and a new coach and some new blood and and new energy, and it really can make a difference. What a play! The pass was perfect to the setter. The set was on the money, and it just kind of teed up the perfect swing, and that is the third kill now on the evening for Gabby Deary. Well, and she does a really nice job. There's a double block up against her, and she just hits that cross back, or that cut back angle, and gets the kill. Two huge swings on the outside. Second one goes down for a kill. She really winds up and knocks the ball pretty hard. She does, and it's a nice job of staying out of the net. Sometimes when you get an overpass like that, it's so easy to get your hand tangled in the net because you just want to, you're drooling, and you just want to hit the ball so hard that you just swing and you end up with your hand in the net. Sari Keel with the kill, and a quick answer, and really doing a good job of spreading the distribution for offense is Burlington Notre Dame. That is the fourth kill now for Deary. All right, here we are. First set of the 1A championship match. Gladbrook Rhinebeck on the left of your screen. Burlington Notre Dame on the right. Now, the what I was talking about for the keys and the playing big, that ball right there is where Burlington Notre Dame needs to just go up and Heck, if she wants to, growl and just roar and now take it, it away and, and don't give Gre the, the Rebels a <laughs> chance at it. You gotta just like be dominant. It's like the big oomph for grunt in tennis, right, right? Right, right. Now, how much growling did you do back in your day at Comanche <laughs> High School? Or was that more a Big Ten thing for you? It's more just walking through the hallways for me. <laughs> Carry that load of confidence if you believe in yourself. Well, and that's that's about a, a lot of what it is, is, is once you start acting like that, then you start being like that. And I, I when I work with young girls, I talk about different ways to try and get them to think like that. What kind of animal would be like that? Oh, a lion. Okay, act like you're a lion and then try that. You know, whatever it is to try and get them, because as young girls, they're taught they have to be nice. And yes, we want you to be nice, but on the court, we also want you to just go after it and be aggressive and be tough and dominate. Yep, don't get pushed around, go out and get it. Yep. 13 to 11, halfway point here of this opening set. You're hearing the voices of Barb Randall. Again, Iowa High School Girls Union Athletic Hall of Fame, All-American at the University of Iowa, and longtime D1 assistant coach. 13-12, and I am impressed Burlington Notre Dame has held that lead right from the get-go, but they haven't been able to build on it as Gladbrook Rhinebeck has been playing real tough to make sure that it doesn't grow. And right now we're tied up at 13 apiece. Let's take a look at this replay from our net camera now. 
Well, and that's not even the setter who's pushing that over. That, nope. That's the middle, Megan Cooley. Or, yeah, she's yep. the middle, Megan Cooley. She just goes up with one hand and just shoves it over. The blocker for Bur Burlington Notre Dame needs to really pay attention to that and go up and be up with her. We're on a run here for Gladbrook Rhinebeck, and that is the fourth kill coming for Ava Wyatt. And a timeout on the court called by Burlington Notre Dame. Well, let's look at the path these two teams have taken since Monday to get here and a little different path for these schools. Let's start at the top, Janesville, as we saw the Golden Plaque Award given to their longtime head coach, but it was Council Bluff St. Albert that defeated them. In an upset, that was a huge upset. Very big. And then Gladbrook Rhinebeck defeated Springville, and then Gladbrook Rhinebeck in the semifinals, beat Council Bluff St. Albert last night. On the bottom half of the bracket, the interesting thing is Wapsie Valley was the number two team in the state, but due to uh, some positive COVID tests, COVID yeah, tests no idea if it was one, two, right, or three, right. they were unable to play on Tuesday, November 3rd at 5.30, so they forfeited. So this Burlington Notre Dame team got the forfeit to get into. Yeah, they essentially had a bye. Yeah, and then they defeated last night Galen Catholic in five sets, winning the fifth set 15 to 12. And talking with their head coach, he said, you know, we're disappointed that we didn't get to play Wapsie Valley. Oh, yeah. We really wanted to play that first round match, first time to state. Yep. We're, we're, he said, we're kind of afraid of COVID. We didn't even come up to watch even the first round because they're trying to just take care of everything as they don't want uh, anything to have, trying to control what they can control. Yeah, but you really want to get as many games in this atmosphere mm -hmm. as you can to help you in the later rounds. No free pass in the semifinals though. And they have <laughs> earned their way to get here. And right now they have looked strong in this opening set. And if this first portion of this first set is any indication of what we're gonna <laughs> see, this, this is, one's definitely it's going gonna be five. Tight. That's right. We might even get some extra scores. Good block by GR. Set to the outside, flying in. And that will finally result in a kill. Burlington Notre Dame got underneath it, but unable to control it on a successful pass. Let's look at that one again, as that's Keel with well, the, another kill. And the defenses are getting a lot of touches, but they're not getting the ball into playable positions for their teammates. Just like that yep. one, you know, they're getting they're getting a lot of touches. They're getting to the right spots, but they're not making playable plays. So that probably will turn around a little bit as this match goes on. Here's Josie Bentz. Little give and go on the pass, the return, and the kill down the line. And again, that line shot is so potent because it's so hard to dig that straight ball coming at you so hard. If you're too far up the line, it's coming right at your chin, at your chest, and it, you don't know whether to take it as a forearm pass or with your hands, and so you really need to stay, uh, you know, about 20 feet back. Gladbrook Rhinebeck on a run here. Getting a little momentum going as five kills now for Wyatt. Wyatt on the year, just a sophomore, 5'10", right side hitter, 111 kills. Let's look at this one again, as that is the sixth kill for number eight, Gabby Deary. Well, and we've seen so many young players in this tournament. Today, so many. All, almost so all many. the teams we've talked about today have had such great young players, freshman and sophomore, and, and this matches the same way. What's that gonna do next year and the year after? Not only if they get back to state, which you would assume that they would, but don't assume anything. Right. <laughs> but then also in the off season, the prep and the, the understanding how sweet and special it was to get yeah. down. They've tasted it, yes. and now they go back and prepare for their junior year or senior year. It really helps the 
the workouts the coaches give them because because of that taste. It's so sweet and it's so amazing to be here and to be in this atmosphere. And then you just want to get back and you want to be the winner of this match. Here's the replay from our net camera again. The quick set there. You have a lot of options when you have that set. She decided to tap it over. A nice placement with Bergman serving now. Missed contact on the hit. And Gladbrook Rhinebeck, who trailed by two or three points throughout most of this first set, now has the lead as we race to 25, win by two. But I, I will say, they've gotten their lead the hard way. Instead of going on a run of four or five or six, they've gotten two and let Notre Dame get one, and then they get two again. And I mean, it hasn't been any super run. Neither team is allowing that. A big side out there for Burlington Notre Dame. Here is Gabby Deary, the team leader in kills right now. We'll see what it, how that works out in this rotation with her in the back row here. They go on a back row attack, it's blocked. And somehow that got through the block and the back row unable to creep up and keep the ball off the court for GR. And that's one of the things that the players have to really be paying attention. When you see someone go up, they're off balance, their hand is outstretched and barely gonna reach the ball. You have to know that all they can do with that is tip the ball and you have to be on your toes and get that ball. Momentum has shifted. Burlington Notre Dame leads by one. And they're on. A run of three. Which a run of three <laughs> at this That's point. the longest run we've had in this game. Ball just barely clips over the top of the net on the serve. Down the line and that's in. Well, this rotation has proved fruitful for Burlington Notre Dame and a timeout comes as you look at that last play. Twenty-two twenty, in favor of the Nikes. Well, we are in the midst of a pandemic, and let's take a look at what is being done, what precautions are being taken here for this championship, and all week long in Cedar Rapids. Number one, student masks are required in the arena. Adult masks are required unless seated. But Barb and I can tell you that the <laughs> they're strict. Everyone is yeah. uh, masked up. Rows of seats are blocked off. You can see on some of our camera angles, they literally saran wrapped rows of yeah. seats, so you can't sit there. Players and teams and cleaning. And, and the reason yeah. why this starts at 8 p.m. tonight, I mean, my bedtime's usually about <laughs> 9 o'clock, so. Mine's past. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because they build in that extra time, so you kick everyone out, you sanitize everything, bring them back in. We'll talk more about it a little later, but this is at a real critical point here where the Nikes are closing in. And we've just talked about, there's been no runs in here, and now the run is happening. Yep, they're, uh, Notre Dame is on a run of five. A side out would be very big for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. The, oh, so, it just sails out of bounds, and that brings up set point for Burlington Notre Dame. I think we might get another timeout here. So just to kind of follow up on the on the precautions that are being taken, they're also between every match, they're sanitizing all the seats in the arena, the players' benches, the floor. Uh, the floor is done in between matches, and then. They also, with the ball, there's a three ball rotation. And so when the ball gets done with that play, it gets wiped down. So they're sanitizing in the timeouts. All the players are getting sanitizer and, and using that on their hands. So, And a fun a fact lot. that you probably don't know, viewers, Barb and I are in Johnston, <laughs> Iowa. We're not even in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, we used to be sitting in the corner back there. We are socially distanced in the Iowa PBS studios, and we are watching on TV as you are. Set point.
point for Burlington Notre Dame. There it is. And the team that has never been to state before just won the first set in this 1A championship match. We'll be back with set two. That was a good one. We'll see what the second set has to offer when we return here on Iowa Public Broadcasting. The iconic picture of woodworking is a craftsperson standing at the workbench. It's the center of most shops and where you'll spend most of your time. So this time on the Woodsmith Shop, we're building a classic English style workbench. It features a solid wood plank top, loads of clamping options, and a great solid wood vise. It's all coming up this time on the Woodsmith Shop. Tune in or stream Tuesday evening at 6.30 on Iowa PBS. If you consider yourself a rural Iowan, take a moment to think about your life and the community you call home, and then share your story with Iowa PBS. Tell us about you or your community's most heroic struggle or wildest success. No story is too big or too small. Share your story by calling 800-373-6306 or visiting iowapbs.org slash your story. December 7th, 1941. I decided that I wanted to become a paratrooper. My dad ran away and joined the army. 14-year-olds nowadays are focused on homework and video games. Back in his day, he's focused on, how am I going to survive now? He believed he did his job, and then he was lucky enough to go on in life and do other things. Tune in or stream Wednesday evening at 10 on Iowa PBS. Did you know that the trolley in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood traveled 5,000 miles every year? Or that Bob Ross painted each piece on the joy of painting a total of three times? If you're an Iowa PBS fan, join us virtually for fun and prizes at Retro Night Trivia on Wednesday, December 9th at 7 p.m. For more information and to register yourself or your team, visit iowapbs.org slash events. Burlington Notre Dame victorious in the first set of the 1A championship 25-20. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. It was neck and neck right till the very end and then a little run was put together and that's all it took. Well, and that is really all it takes. You can have your little run at the beginning of the set and then play tit for tat or you can play tit for tat and then pull away at the end. It works both ways. Both teams very competitive and bar, but didn't seem shell shock scared or anything. I think both these teams and all these student athletes are ready to go and seize this opportunity that's right in front of them right now tonight. Well, and it's interesting because as volleyball players, most of them have played club and been in all kinds of different arenas, places to play, all, all different situations. And so they're going to be a little bit more comfortable in, in different situations. Well, you think the final score was good and even check out this <laughs> only one kill separating them only one assist separating them only one dig separating them and only one service ace separating them that's how tight this was and that's why we think the second third fourth maybe fifth set is going to be competitive as well yeah that i mean that it, you can't really get much tighter than that 25 20 burlington notre dame victorious and they will get a chance to serve first. Here's Josie Bentz. Wow. Free ball over the net. She didn't hesitate. She could have, you know, bumped it around and set up, a, <laughs> but I don't think you're going to get a better look than that, Barb. No, and why would you want to bump it around? I mean, if you can go ahead and take a good hard swing at it, do it. Standing down ball from near the out of bounds line was a pretty nice attack. But Burlington Notre Dame gets an even better swing on it to go up 2-0 here in the second. Well, and you can see she kind of goes towards that back corner. 
the Rebels are in a perimeter defense, so that does open up those corners. All right, let's teach our viewers what in the <laughs> world is a perimeter defense, Barb. Well, perimeter defense is also sometimes called player back, and it, it's you see it right there. You've got three players in the back row. One stays in the middle of the court, and the other two kind of come up on the wings about 20 feet off the net, and then the off blocker pulls off to about the 10-foot line, and, and you cover the perimeter of the court and it leaves the corners open, as well as the middle of the court for tips. Yeah, you can't cover every square inch of the court, so you have to kind of pick your poison on what is the priority and what you're willing to give up. Well, and the block helps with that, so you then set the block up so it funnels the ball towards the people in the back row. Four to nothing. Gladbrook Rhinebeck looking to get on the board here in the second set. Denied that time, and it's five to nothing. Each team gets two timeouts. I was going to say the and Rebels might want to take a timeout because it looks like they're coming a little bit off the rails, and you just want to bring them back in. Five points is not a big enough deficit to worry too much about unless a free ball drops on the, on the ground. Paula Kelly in her 12th year at Gladbrook Rhinebeck takes the timeout. Well, folks, as you take a look, Tune in or stream Festifall. This month, join Iowa PBS for Festifall and enjoy incredible musical performances from the comfort of your couch. From Nat King Cole and Josh Groban to Stevie Nicks, Johnny Cash, and Dolly Parton, Festifall has it all. Visit iowapbs.org slash Festifall for the full schedule. Five points separated the Rebels and Nikes in the first set, 25-20 the final. Five points separates them right now. A side out is necessary for the team in blue. Good pass, nice set, good attack. But nice back row defense there for Burlington Notre Dame. And Burlington Notre Dame just seems to be getting even more confident as this whole night rolls on here. Well, and as you get a six point lead coming right out of the, the break between the sets, you're gonna gain confidence. And the Rebels really need to do a, a good job here of breaking that down, stopping the bleeding, and making a run of their own. Hey, they're on the board there with the kill down the line. Six to one, and that is the third kill, excuse me, fourth kill officially for Sari Keel. Keel on the air. She's a senior outside hitter, had 343 kills, a 328 kill percentage, and averaged 4.3 kills per set. And she's going to Southwest Minnesota yep. State next year. To play to, volleyball. Yep. But no run able to be put together for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. A side out. You see three players with seven or more kills for Burlington Notre Dame. That's pretty good for this early in the second set. Miscommunication again in the back row for GR. Not well, sure whose ball it was, and it split the difference. Well, and it is going to that corner. I mean, if, if they keep hitting those corner balls, that middle back needs to step over and just kind of cheat, knowing, hey, they're going over here. Let's stop them and make them go somewhere else. Nice swing down for another point. For Gladbrook Rhinebeck looking at this year, again, 32 years since the last time they made it to the state championship, 1988. It was actually held at a much smaller venue, Southeast Polk High School. Well, in those days, the state tournament was held in Des Moines at different high schools. When I played in 86, we had our quarterfinal match at one high school, and then the next day we had our semis and finals at a different high school. Hmm. So it was, it was more of a community. You were getting to explore the Des Moines community. And the last time Gladbrook Rhinebeck played in the state volleyball tournament, 
It was a short stay as the Rebels lost their 2018 state opener. Two starters on this year's team were from that roster. So they have at least that experience to help carry them. But then you look at what Burlington Notre Dame is. None of these players have ever <laughs> been here, but it doesn't seem to matter right now. It really doesn't. And like, I, I mean, I don't know how much we can emphasize when you get <laughs> transfers in, in the middle of the season, that both play a ton of minutes, you're gonna have some kind of, well, as long as the team accepts it and the Correct. chemistry is good, you're gonna have some kind of benefit out of it. Fourth point to the second set for GR. Here's another look at it from the outside. Because we haven't talked about that, but that chemistry issue could be a problem. If, if the team hadn't accepted those mm -hmm. two, then, you know, good for the team to accept them because they probably wouldn't be here otherwise. Set to the outside for GR. Sails out of bounds. An attack air. And first to double digits here in set two is Burlington Notre Dame. Katie Stevens stepping back there to serve. Well, Katie Stevens, after the semifinal, said she had no idea what to expect this volleyball season. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> well, first New of coach. all, Will the season happen? How right. long will the season last with the pandemic? We what? got a brand new coach. Right. Oh, by the way, here's a couple new players. Okay, we didn't get, they didn't get to start uh, their season due to the quarantine pandemic and or quarantine. COVID or we don't know exactly what they the situation was. They make to their but. first state tournament ever <laughs> yeah. and their first opponent, the number two ranked yeah. Wapsie Valley, doesn't show up because uh, of having to, to face um, the, the quarantine as well. So it's just been a well, wild ride. And then, as you mentioned earlier, he didn't even bring them to the tournament to watch due to fears of COVID. So they didn't know what they were even coming into. Yeah. They didn't know what the court setup looked like. They didn't know what, you know, where to go. It's, it's a big deal. 12-4, the Nikes. Love that name, the Nikes, the Burlington Notre Dame Nikes are feeling pretty good right now. Well, it's interesting, that name, the Nikes. Um, I have a, a business partner who lives in the, in the Burlington area, and so I, I didn't know they were the Nikes. And so I'm like, Nikes? How can they be the Nikes? And so I, I looked online, and it looked like the school was founded in 89. So I'm like, well, how can that ever happen? But he said his dad had played against the Nikes in the 60s. So he thought the school came before the shoes. Yep. Well, and other products, but. 13 to 5, Barb. And Gladbrook Rhinebeck just does not look as crisp. You know, just a, a bit off compared to what we saw to start this match. Yeah. And again, we've talked about it throughout the day. How, if, if, if something's coming at you like this, how do you make a change? What do you do to make a change? And we've talked about the energy level and you just have to keep moving and, and like we talked about, keep your feet moving and try and, and get that extra ball up so that somebody else can go for it. And that becomes contagious. Big swing, you could hear that one. Or you one. can do that. <laughs> I want to check the uh, air pressure in the volleyball after that. <laughs> well, Pounded and that's well it. run. Yep, that's good timing. You want to, as a middle, you want to get in there quick and you want to beat the block to the ball. I've been around the sports world enough to know that sometimes one big play like that can get, get a little bit more juice, a little bit more confidence Absolutely. going. Absolutely. Let's see if Gladbrick Rhinebeck can use it. Another, Another good one. swing, but it won't drop. That was a good save. Yeah, I didn't think that went. And that's deflating when you're throwing your best stuff at your opponent and they're returning it. So the, re the reason that whistle was a little bit late is because both the referee and then the down referee get a vote. And if the up ref doesn't call it, the down ref will hold a four on her chest. Mm -hmm. And then the up ref calls it after that, after she sees that. Kill number six for number six, Wyatt, Ava Wyatt, the sophomore. Burlington Notre Dame on the swing on the right side of your screen. On the left side is 
Gladbrook Rhinebeck, that one gets through for another point. So, so get, getting a bit of a run here now, nine kills for number four. Uh, he, cool. The reason that Burlington Notre Dame has had a couple of those blocks come down in front of them is because they're going straight up with their arms. They're not pressing over the net. You need to penetrate the plane of the net when you're blocking so that the ball stays on the other side of the net. If your arms go straight up, the ball hits it, it's going to roll right down, and then it's really hard to try and get that ball up legally. Good idea, but the ball hit a bit too hard on the sideline, the sideline attack. And making, there's at one point, it was 12 to four, and now it's 15 to 10. Played a 25, win by two. Burlington Notre Dame won the first set 25-20. Well, and this is why we always talk about momentum, because rarely is there a whole set where momentum stays on one side of the court. It usually is like a pendulum going back and forth, and you have to take advantage of it when it's on your side. Over the block, and the side out. 11 kills on the night so far for Katie Stevens. Burlington Notre Dame from Des Moines County, Southeast Iowa Super Conference. They were 17 and five heading into the tournament, five and three in conference play, and they lost their first three matches of the year. Well, are you saying Burlington Notre Dame did that? Yeah. Well, it, that is, Makes sense to me, because if you're out for the first two weeks while other people are playing, it you're still kind of, yeah, getting used to things when they're already kind of warmed up and into it. Four-point advantage for Burlington Notre Dame. Well, you can stay connected with Iowa PBS Sports no matter where you're watching from. Join the conversation. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and use hashtag Iowa PBS Sports. 16-12, Barb, right before this 1A Championships, they had the Golden Plaque Award and they walked out Shelly Sorensen, longtime coach at Janesville, 34 years of head coaching, 30 of them at Janesville, five state titles, one runner-up, 329 victories, 11 trips to the state tournament. Uh, pretty cool when they honor these coaches that have built up just years and years of, of giving back in, in, to the game of volleyball and to the Iowa girl. Well, and that award only started 10, 10 years ago, so she's the 10th recipient, so that's pretty cool too. You're I'm sure she wishes she was playing in this yeah. match. And it's a little strange not to see James yes. win it with the tradition they've had the last 11 years. 16-13. And another thing that's special here at the Iowa Girls High School State Volleyball Tournament is the Hall of Fame, which you are a uh, member of that prestigious Hall of Fame. And this year, some great inductees uh, honored today for what they did as student athletes when they competed. Yeah, and that class was Lisa Brinkmeyer from Hubbard Radcliffe, Morgan Kurt from Waverly Shell Rock, and Emily Linsman from Dubuque Hempstead. Congratulations to the newest inductees of the Hall of Fame. It's a great honor and it's really fun to be honored in front of all these fans and the way the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union does it, it makes you feel really special. Because you are. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the Hall of Fame, you're real special and uh, well deserving of, of all of that. So. While we're talking about the Golden Plaque Award in the Hall of Fame, Gladbrook Rhinebeck has made this a one point second set difference. And they're doing some big plays like that defensively as well. Well, that's just what I was just going to say. Yep, they've been, they've been stepping up defensively and some of the balls that were dropping before aren't dropping. They're getting, we, we call blocking kind of a feast or famine sport or, or skill, I should say. You can 
get block after block after block, and then it seems to go dry for a little bit, and then it picks up a little bit, and, and it, I don't know why that happens, but it just seems to be the nature of that skill. Well, Katie Clark is more feast than famine. The junior led them with 58 blocks on the year, and then they get another point. Well, they're on a six-point run right now. 17-16. Yeah, when it was 12-4, I thought, all right, well, Burlington Notre Dame's going to jump out to a 2-0 lead, and we'll see what Gladbrook Rhinebeck can do in that third set. And now the Rebels are trying to even this thing up, and they're in a position to do just that. Well, and I like watching coaches in this position, and Coach Mike Davis from Burlington Notre Dame, he doesn't seem nervous at all. He's just talking to him calmly, not yelling at him. Just, hey, ladies, this is what we need to do. Make this happen. This is what we were doing that was working before. Let's get back to that. It was definitely working. Again, they won 25-20, and they pulled away when it was 20-20. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of volleyball left to be played here in the second set. It's been a full day of championship volleyball. Ankeny won the championship in five a in four sets over Iowa City Liberty. Cedar Rapids Xavier defeated West Delaware in 4A in three straight sets. Mount Vernon versus Osage. It was Osage winning 3-0 in 3A. Dyke New Hartford swept Denver 3-0. And we're down to the final match of the entire volleyball season. Well, and you can see Burlington Notre Dame also plays that same perimeter defense and the Rebels are taking it to them kind of in the same spot where they were getting it earlier. Well, if you see something working for your opponent, right. why don't you Especially if you play it? the same defense, exactly. Plus, we always talk about those golden corners and a lot of times defense gets sucked into the middle of the court. If you can shoot things deep, you're gonna have lots of success. Gabby Deary with the serve. She's so potent wherever she is on the court. And this has been a, a nice rotation for her. That's what I was just going to say. And you might have jinxed that one. Because yeah, yeah. the attack air yeah. gives a quick side out to Gladbrook Rhinebeck. But when Deary was serving last set, that's where they got seven points and went on that run at the end of the set. Well, they snuffed that out right away. It almost seems like Burlington Notre Dame has gotten a little tentative. I would agree. And it, it's it's kind of like now they're getting a little bit nervous. You know, they came right out, sledgehammer, took it to them. Well, it went tit for tat, but got that first set win, and then now they're they're swinging a little bit more hesitantly. That one was not a hesitant swing. No, it though. wasn't. <laughs> and as we look at the replay. That's what we like to see. Hammer that ball. kills. She already has a dozen kills here tonight. Katie Stevens. And on the other side, Sari Keel has 11 kills for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Another point, and it is... It's kind of a competition here between the two schools, but between the two leaders of offense, both tied at a dozen for individual <laughs> stats. Leading by three. Ball popped up, unable to get to that. Well, it looks to me like the Rebels have made a little bit of an adjustment with their defense, and they're funneling the ball more away from the corner that was successful before and more towards the left back defender and it's going right to her and she's making good ups with it. And they get a gift there as the ball gets served into the net, a service error. And the Rebels now just three points away from evening up this 1A final. <laughs> so you get a service error from your opponent, then you get a service ace on the very next play by Emma McClintock, the sophomore setter. Let's see if she can do it again. Nice pass. Give and go. That is a textbook play. And it's it's beautiful. The, when, the pass just perfect right on the money. Yeah, and middles up 
against a single blocker. At this level, you should be getting kills most of the time against a single blocker. So Burlington Notre Dame now, two players have double digit kills. Little campfire right in the center of the defense. Element of surprise, and that brings up set point. Cooley has six kills for GR. Ball clipped off the top of the net, no touch called, and we're tied. Wait, wait. I thought it looked like it was in, so I'm not exactly sure what they're calling. Seeing Can't see the ref, but. Celebrations on both sides. Yeah. So oh. instead it's 24-21. Flying in, and that one's down for sure. Gladbrook Rhinebeck was down huge early on. They never gave up. They fought and clawed all their way back, and we are tied one to one in 1A. Back with set three right after this. You're tuned into Iowa PBS Sports. In 1930, Germany was a democracy. Just four years later, Hitler and the Nazis were in control. Political networks were evaporated overnight. Historians uncover how it happened. Conspiracy murder. Can we describe it as mafia politics? And what could have been done to stop it. It is a warning to us to prevent this from happening again. Rise of the Nazis. Tune in or stream Tuesday evening at 8 on Iowa PBS. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. I've known the family for years. I never, ever dreamt it would end like this. Across the globe, islands are home to some of the most remarkable animals and extraordinary cultures on the planet. I'm Scott Yu. Come with me to uncover how a country boy became the most influential composer of all time. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station. Sign in and start streaming today. Join Iowa PBS virtually on November 10th at 7 p.m. for an advanced online screening of great performances, Fiddler and Miracle of Miracles. This exciting program shares the story behind the international Broadway blockbuster, Fiddler on the Roof. The cast and crew will be joined by famous fans, including Lin-Manuel Miranda, to tell their own stories about this famous musical. To register, visit iowapbs.org slash events. See you there. PBS online for a family-friendly concert with the Des Moines Community Orchestra Salute to Veterans. This exciting virtual performance takes place on November 15th at noon and will be co-hosted by me, Abby Brown. For more information and to RSVP, visit iowapbs.org slash events. Jumping around, having fun. It's getting late into the evening from Cedar Rapids and the Alliant Energy Powerhouse Center, and things are looking pretty good in this 1A final. Here's a look at the set two highlights. 12 to four, Burlington Notre Dame was feeling real good, and then Gladbrook Rhinebeck dug deep and changed some things, and then took this second set over, winning final score 25-21. And this is why you play. Pa stats on paper, everything looks good. But how matter. will these student athletes respond? And Gladbrook Rhinebeck, I mean, that's pretty impressive to, to battle back like that. Well, and that's what we're talking about, about momentum, just swinging back and forth, not just throughout the match, but in each set, like every five points or so, that, that mo momentum is swinging. And you can kind of see <laughs> everything is still pretty similar. There are a couple more blocks than there were after the first set, but only one or two separate each of those teams. And that makes sense. The stats are even because we are even. One set to one set. The first school that wins three sets, they are crowned the Class 1A champion. Eric Braley, Barb Randall, welcome you back. We're watching from afar in the Iowa <laughs> PBS studios in Johnston, Iowa, and the match is being played in Cedar Rapids. Let's go to our net cam for the replay here. 
Well, and you can see that ball doesn't ever hit the blocker's hands. And so when it bounces out of bounds, it doesn't really matter. It would have been four contacts if uh, Burlington Notre Dame would have touched it anyway. One to one, and we are seeing some pretty impressive individual stats starting to pile up here as we're just starting this third set uh, with some players that are trying to do exactly what they can to deliver their first state title to this school. Yeah. 14 and, kills now there. And, and we have two players for Burlington Notre Dame that have 12 kills each. I mean, that's impressive. The attack from sideline to sideline, a hit too hard and out of bounds. And Gladbrook Rhinebeck three, and the Nikes of Burlington Notre Dame one into the net for the service air. So, Barb, you're from Cedar Rapids. That's where you're from, Comanche. Yeah, you've I was lived in Cedar say, Rapids for that, a long don't time. Don't take that Comanche away from me. <laughs> The Cedar Rapids really rolls out the red carpet for they this do. state tournament. Yep. You know, Fort Dodge's cross country and softball and the girls basketball is in Des Moines, but Cedar Rapids loves their volleyball. And I always feel treated, you know, as a fan, a spectator, as the, the media. Um, and it's special for the community of Cedar Rapids as well to have that. It is, it brings a lot of revenue into the community, which the community actually can use a lot, especially this year after the derecho came through and wrecked so much in the community. I don't know anybody who lives there who didn't have some kind of damage and lots of people had a lot of damage. So it really helps in that regard. The city puts you know flags out all around downtown and the buildings are lit up with pink lights and it's it's really a neat atmosphere within the building itself and it's Cedar Rapids is really proud to host it, and we're lucky. The tournament held at the Alliant Energy Powerhouse, except for 2011 and 2012, which were at the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena. And that was because of the flood in 2008. Mm -hmm. The uh, At that point, the U.S. Cellular Center was having work done on it. Four to four here in this third set. And it looks different than when I was down there watching and scouting yesterday, yeah. Barb. Yes. There were a couple of courts. Yeah. And now there's just one court. Well, and I, I really think that helps make the finals special. So what happens um, on the first three days of the tournament, the court that you see there is turned the other way, and there are two of them that go side by side with a big, tall net that goes in between them so the balls don't go onto each other's court. And then you you just kind of play 5A on the first day. 5A has two matches, 4A has two matches. Each level has two matches. And then on the semifinal day, it's just like today, except with two courts. And then they, after the match got done last night, which would have been a late night, they take up both of those courts and turn one and put it as you see it now. And I just think it's really cool to come in in the morning as a finals competitor and you see that court and it's just like oh this is cool we have worked our tails off to get to this position it makes it extra special as it's now six to five here in this third set and the IGHSAU the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union they do a lot with branding as well and I don't I mean we've been doing this for about 20 years I don't remember all the pink really uh, being as bold it as, as, right. as in the past probably five years yeah, or so. Yeah, well, when Jean Berger came in in 2016, that was one of her branding, I'm going to say messages, was she wanted the pink associated with it. And that's when the winners started getting pink T-shirts and the court became pink. And we try and wear pink. And the, everybody that works for the union, they all are in pink throughout the week. And then... They all have matching scarves or matching shirts or something for the day of the finals. You see pink flags there for the uh, the officials have, pink whistles. And you mentioned Jean Berger, a champion for women's and girls athletics, the the girl, the Iowa girl, uh, longtime 
administrator at Drake in the University of Northern Iowa, as actually an interim athletic director at UNI before taking over for the union in 2016, which I'm like, yeah, that was a couple years ago. Oh, 2016? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while now. Yeah, well, and it's, it's really cool because each year they come back to the tournament, they have some new pink stuff, so it'll be bright pink tennis shoes or bright pink pullovers or, you know, they, they find a way to continue that branding, and I think that's really neat. Trying to elevate these student athletes. And again, the brand of the Iowa girl and the partnership with Iowa PBS Sports, that's pretty important as well. As you can watch this worldwide and across the state of Iowa over the air as well. So three kills here for the Rebels, McClintock. And Burlington Notre Dame has a slight advantage at nine to seven, but after that side out, here is Alyssa Morgan. Blocked down point. Well, what? and they've kind of shut down that, that shot for Bentz. If you remember, that's the exact shot that she was hitting into that deep corner, and now the block is, is taking that from her. And, It'll be interesting to see what her reaction is. She tries it again and they shut it down again, but it'll be interesting to see if she gets frustrated or how she fights through that. You have to get creative of how you can hit it up and over or side to side around or hard to tool it, hit it off the block and ricochet out of bounds off them. But that front line, especially in this rotation, is really flexing their muscles for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Nine to nine. Here in the third set, again, Burlington Notre Dame won the first set 25-20. Gladbrook Rhinebeck won the second set 21-25. There you see the Saran Wrap separating, social distancing. Not, they can't fill that arena up. Uh, doing different precautions to make sure people are safe, but yet the games can be played. Well, and it was interesting there. You saw, you heard Coach Mike Davis talk about, you can't be timid, we gotta go out swinging, and he's exactly right. We talked about this earlier today. My preference is I would rather have balls hit to South America, if you're hitting them hard, than tips that are being picked up. You know, go out, be aggressive, because eventually those are gonna go in and you're gonna be okay. Pretty good aggressive swing there. And Burlington Notre Dame, first to double digits here in the third set. 14 kills now, 14 kills for Benz. Good talking, you can hear the chatter, the communication. Well, and there's a lot of that that goes on that people don't know about. And a lot of times it's the back row that's telling the hitter what they see from the defense. If there's a hole in the block, if the line's open, if cross court or a tip in the middle of the court, or they may come back in their huddle and say, hey, when you have that shot, the tip over the block is wide open, or the tip deep down the line is wide open. And it's, it's constant communication that needs to happen in this match. Great hustle and pursuit after the volleyball. And it will go for a point for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Fourteen kills for Keel and seven kills for Megan Cooley for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Another one, and now leading by two points here. It'd be interesting. I know what you and I have done today. We've been watching the entire tournament. But if you don't play till eight o'clock at night for yeah. a state title, <laughs> I'd love to know what they did. You know, wake up. Right. Eat your cereal. Right. Well, I <laughs> stay loose. I'm a big fan of Bobby Peterson's at UNI, and you know, I mean, I've been in that program with her, and so I I know what she do, what she does. And one of the things that I I think she was brilliant. 
I, I think she's brilliant anyway, but one of the things that she really did well was manage her team's um, activity level, we're gonna say. So during the day of a game, we, we didn't want all the players laying around in the in the hotel the whole time. A lot of them study and that kind of stuff, but you're still sitting there, not doing anything. So we would have kind of what we called active rest, and we'd go to a mall, and they'd have to walk around for a, a, an amount of time, not hard, not fast, but just get moving, keep things kind of oiled and juiced up. And then at a certain point in time, they were allowed to go sit down and, and rest. but. I thought that was always kind of a good plan. Yeah, you don't want to lay around all day and then you at don't want to wear them out go. with a practice, Correct. right? 13 13 here in this third set. Again, great communication. Nice spot. Saw the opening, went up and went for perfect placement over just hitting it as hard as she could. Well, and a lot of times when things, as as rallies keep going on and things are happening quick, quickly, things start getting sucked in. So pushing it back to that back corner, you're gonna catch people off guard. A service air, and Burlington Notre Dame benefits from that. They played a 25 win by two. And I always like to say win by two because just because you get to 25 That's first, exactly right. yeah. we've done a lot of broadcasts over the years that go into kind of that overtime period. <laughs> and then if that happens, you get to hear my philosophy about how that works <laughs> and how it should. We'll hold that oh, because we might get there. Yes, yes. <laughs> this one feels very similar to how the first set went. One point run here, one point there, nice one point, one point. Yeah. And then when it got to 20 to 20, it was really the Rebels that were not able to make the push and the Nikes of Burlington Notre Dame that did make the push to get that victory. Good up. Good swing. The Nikes get denied. Let's see this net cam, just the timing of the jump, the extension, and Burlington Notre Dame unable to pop it back up and keep it off the court. Miscommunication for Gladbrook Rhinebeck, and again, nice cross court swing. Now, double digit kills for number eight, Gabby Deary. Three players in double digit kills for Burlington Notre Dame so far. And that's always good for your offense because it keeps the defense of the other team guessing where the ball's going to go. If you have one player who gets all the sets, it's easy to set up a defense around that. It isn't always easy to dig the ball, but you can set up the defense. <laughs> you can be in it. the right spot, That's but right. if it's flying at you. If it's hammered at it's you. It's one you thing, gotta, uh, yeah. it, like to pop it up, but it directing where that pass yes. goes. I think that's the challenge, because you don't want to send a bullet over to your right. setter. Send her into the net, chasing <laughs> after it. It does take a lot of practice. And the golden number of kills now for number 16, Katie Stevens, the junior with 16 kills for number 16. Little collision for GR. They pop back up and get ready for this. Back row attack. Free ball. One arm save. But it hits the ground, and Burlington Notre Dame now jumps ahead by two. And a timeout called. Burlington Notre Dame wants this one bad. They want to go up two to one. As we take a look at this timeout, let's tell you about reliving the excitement. Our first broadcast was at 10 a.m. today. 
What's that? Is that still today? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be going until 10 o'clock tonight. Relive the excitement. Share these moments with your family, friends, your neighbors, anybody. Visit iowapbs.org for archives of championship games anytime. Barb, let's revisit the keys to the match. And do you think that both these teams, I mean, it's about as evenly matched as you could be every time we look at the stats, we're like, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, well, and that's kind of what we said. They have the same amount of experience here. They're, they're new, but I do think that, you know, they don't look like they're having too many jer jitters or too nervous about things right now. I think they're having fun. And I think that's what high school sports are it supposed sure to be. Yep. But like we've talked about, winning and, and do, doing well and uh, reaching your potential is probably the most fun thing when you're doing it with your friends and classmates. A point out of the timeout makes it 19-16. Here's the replay. Kind of, they were expecting that play. <laughs> They're just sitting and waiting for it. Back row attack, it's blocked. Well, and again, talk about blocking being a feast or famine skill. We've kind of seen that here, where Burlington Notre Dame has gone on a kind of a blocking spree, and yeah. then Gladbrook, Gladbrook Rhinebeck has gone on a blocking spree, and now it's back over to Burlington Notre Dame, and kind of one of those skills. A four point lead for Burlington Notre Dame. No touches, and the attack goes long. A side out. And to serve will be Alyssa Morgan. Morgan, a tremendous libero. She's one of the seniors. 38 aces on the year. Second on the team with 301 digs. Set to the middle, through the block. Ball tipped. And it's I gonna be it a point for bounce. Gladbrook Rhinebeck. I think the antenna might have got contacted and we have another point for Gladbrook Rhinebeck and another chance to serve for Alyssa Morgan. Wow. So the trajectory of yeah. that ball looks that like it's fly. sailing, yeah. but because the defense is sucked in so much that you can get that deep corner, and you know that was like a foot 18 inches uh -huh. inside the court, and it just looks so long because everybody's sucked into the court. Yeah, when she made contact with that, I'm like, well, they're going to have to get that out of the first <laughs> row. I thought that was just flying, and then it just dropped right in there. Ready for the tip. Ooh, a little too strong on that pass. GR fortunate to get it back. We play on. Two contacts, a lift called. And now Burlington Notre Dame leads by four, and they need just three more points. Timeout called for Gladbrook Rhinebeck now. Well, Gr Gladbrook Rhinebeck, in a team survey before the tournament, is there a saying or phrase that your head coach always tells their team? The response, wear your mask, <laughs> make good choices. That's Sounds good. like my parents. <laughs> First to five. Tough after 20. Yeah. The, What's tough after 20 mean? It means you need to hang tough. So if, if you get to 20 points, you need to be tough and you need to push for those last five points because that's when your back's going to be against the wall and you're going to get the best the other team has to give. Team motto this year for Gladbrook Rhinebeck dreams don't work unless you do. I haven't heard that one before. I like it. I haven't it. heard it either. Well, Gladbrook Rhinebeck needs a side out as Burlington Notre Dame can see the light at the end of the tunnel here in this set. The attack air, the hit went deep and out of bounds. It's now 23-18. That's a good idea. That play will work. The set was just a little bit low. Two more points for the Nikes. 
Back row attack into the net. That brings up set point. So Burlington Notre Dame won the first set 25-20. Gladbrook Rhinebeck won the second set 25-21. And now it's 24-18. Timing error on the contact and jump. And we head to the fourth set. If Burlington Notre Dame wins to the fourth set, they will win their first ever state title in their first ever trip to state under the first year head coach <laughs> who's never coached before. It's wild. But Gladbrook Rhinebeck has other ideas. Back with more after this. This is Iowa PBS. Potatoes are a staple in so many dishes and sides, and they almost always make a meal better. I'm Charity Nebbe. On the next Iowa Ingredient, we'll visit a farm in Logan to see how potatoes are grown in the state. Then, Chef Krista Farnsworth from her soup kitchen will feature the potato in some delicious recipes. All that and more on the next Iowa Ingredient. Saturday morning at 11.30 on Iowa PBS. please. I got something I gotta tell you. I was raised to believe no dream is unreachable. You can't get in the way of a good story. Hemingway is this enormous talent. That's wonderful. What I got is the new thing. The game just got bigger. Did you? It's better than It remains a fast-moving story. Get to the bottom of it. This is what adventures are made of. Slime molds. How could you not love them? <laughs> you ain't ever seen Phenomenal. What you about to see. That's pretty amazing. I can't believe it myself. Wow. I'm speechless. Yeah. I believe this right here is the best. Yeah. Oh, that's some hot gossip for you, isn't it? It's better than I love bringing other people together. I feel like I'm doing something important. How powerful is that? Stay curious. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. And time keeps dragging on. Now we got married in a fever. Hotter than Coming to Iowa PBS, November 30th. Big time performance by Burlington Notre Dame in the third set down the home stretch. They now lead the series two sets to one. Let's take a look at the third set highlights, Barb. And again, momentum. We saw some great attacks. We saw some great digs and passes and sets and just a bit of everything here. Well, and the blocking has picked up on yeah. both sides from time to time. And not every block counts as a block. If it doesn't go down for a point, it doesn't count for a block. But that can still be good for your team because you're playing good defense. You're keeping the ball on the other side of the net. And you allow the other team to have another shot at making an error. So now we're in a unique situation where Gladbrook Rhinebeck has to win this fourth set if they want to win the match. While on the other side of the coin, Burlington Notre Dame, if they just win this, they are the state champs. There's a look at the overall stats for the match. A bit more of an advantage leaning towards Notre Dame in a couple of those categories, which makes sense because they have won two of the three. So what's going to happen here? Only time will tell, but a sense of urgency, you need to ratchet it up a couple more notches here for Gladbrook Rhinebeck, and they get the first point as it is the 15th kill for Sari Kill. Well, and that is a great way for Gladbrook Rhinebeck to come out of the huddle. Yeah. Again, so that is all about the placement of your arms and your hands. You'll see there's separation between their arms. Well, can't hard to see it from that angle, but there's separation between their arms and the net, and so the ball just comes right down in front. A big swing. Backslide. Good placement. And now double-digit kills. Eba Wyatt, Wyatt heads to the sideline in the rotation. Right here, Nike. Yep. 
A two to one lead and a chance to serve here in this fourth set. Blocked and another point. No touch on that block, it, the net blocked it. So it's now three to one. And awaiting the ball and the serve. I think this is the rotation that's been problematic for Burlington Notre Dame. Let's see. In the second set, it scored a ton of points for the Rebels. Rebels trying to cash in, trying to widen the gap. There's another point. So, I mean, it's interesting how some rotations just can be so fruitful for certain teams. Yeah, and uh, some of it has to do with the server. Some of it has to do with the matchups. And some of it's just the whole momentum thing. But some servers really have, and this is gonna sound, I'm not really sure if it is if it is too much of a generalization, but a lot of left-handed servers have kind of a different twist or something on the ball, not necessarily a spin, but it comes at you differently. And a lot of times they'll have a really tough serve that's hard for a team to get out of that rotation. Strong play there as we see another kill pulling within one for Burlington Notre Dame. You talk about serves, we're seeing, especially if you've been watching since 10 a.m. today, you've <laughs> seen a variety of different ways that players choose to serve. One, where do they stand? Right. Are they positioned on the right side, the left side, the middle? Are they far back? As you see the replay there, are they flat-footed? Do they toss it up and hit it? And then when they make contact, there's a variety of different things that players can do to get that ball over the net, trying to make it difficult and complicated for their opponent. Oh, and another thing, where they hit the ball over the net, it, different zones. That's right, there are zones on the court and the, they're usually receiving some kind of notice from their coach about where the coach wants them to serve. And we used to tell people, Okay, if I'm giving you zone six and there's a player standing there, don't serve it at the player. Make the player move <laughs> yeah, for take it. Take a step or yeah. two at least. Five to five here in the fourth set. Another good attack, but an even better return in the back row for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Back row attack over the block. Working near side swing, stuffed, and we play on. We've seen some great rallies here at this 1A championship. Got it through the block, and it drops down to the court. Well, in it, at this point, if I'm Gladbrook Rhinebeck, I'm gonna put a double block. Well, they did that time. But I'm gonna put a double block on every middle attack. That doesn't always happen, but it, it needs to at this point. Free ball over the net for GR. Good swing, how about a one-handed save? And it results in a point. So I know I've said several times today that I want my players swinging hard and being aggressive. But again, I'm actually keeping a tally. You've yeah. said it numerous times. <laughs> Great. Um, but my thing is, you still need to be smart about it. Mm -hmm. If your feet aren't posi in position to take a good hard swing, sometimes you have to be smart and get another crack at it. So at what point you're like, okay, this is not, my feet aren't right, the, this isn't, the set's not where we need, I'm just gonna send it over to the other side and hope that we can get it and get a better opportunity well, the next time around. That or hope that the other team makes a mistake. Sure. But if I'm taking a good hard crack and I'm way under the ball, my feet aren't there, and I swing as hard as I can, the ball goes to the ceiling, that doesn't do any good for no. anybody. Well, it does good for the other team, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Seven to six, Burlington Notre Dame leading two sets to one. They get a point there, they're on the right side of your screen. That's them. 
celebrating in the fact that they are making their first ever trip to the state volleyball tournament. They ended Holy Trinity's streak of 10 straight state tournament appearances by defeating the Crusaders in the regional semifinals. Started the season under quarantine the first two weeks of the season. So that's gonna be a center line violation. And the rule on that, you watch here, the, the closest blocker, oh, nope, the other one, sorry. The middle blocker. The rule is if you're touching the line and you're still over, but you're touching the line, you're okay. Once you completely don't touch the line, was that, is that the right grammar? Once you aren't touching the line anymore, it's a violation. I think one of the things that impresses me the most with volleyball is the ability for the players to keep their body from going into the net. Yeah. Because the momentum is, you want to get as close to that net as yeah. possible. You want to swing as hard as you can. You want to dive to get the ball out of the net. Oh, and by the way, don't touch the net. That is a thing that is very challenging that you got to learn at a young age and you got to keep working on improving. Well, and I'm going to tell you as a former player, you'll have more success as a hitter if you stay off the net some. Now, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like, oh my gosh, the ball is really close to the net. I need to get up there. But if you stay three feet off the net more and the angles. set, yep, and the and the set stays three feet off the net, you have more angles to hit around those blockers' hands. And if it's tight to the net, the blocker can just, we call that a trap set. The blocker should block every ball that's tight to the net. Ladbrook Rhinebeck with the point out of the timeout makes it nine to seven. That is the eighth kill now for number 17, Megan Cooley. You see the replay, you see the celebration. Well, Barb as a college D1 All-American, a member of the United States national team. What advice do you have for student athletes that are maybe a sophomore, junior, that they really want to go play volleyball at the next level. They want to play, whether it's D1, D2, D3, junior college, whatever, there's so many options in the state of Iowa. Do you think, and I, I know the answer to this, but, I, but I'm, I, <laughs> a lot of people are saying just focus 365 days a year on volleyball, but you think there's benefits of diversifying. Well, th that's kind of a trick question. I absolutely think there are benefits for playing more than one sport. I did it, and I know that basketball taught me things about my peripheral vision that volleyball never would have ever taught me. Different and, situations. And different. tennis helped in certain ways that, you know, I wouldn't have ever gotten. I mean, it just, it just, there are things that are kind of intangible that you learn in other sports. Now, with as specialized as things have gotten with club and all that, it would be hard to do that, but I still think there's huge value in the cross training of different sports and what they can teach you. And one of the main things is if you use the same body parts for the same sport year round for six or seven years as you're growing up, wears on. You, it wears on, on your body parts. So using different um, sports to use different body parts will help with less wear and tear and hopefully fewer injuries. Hey, look at the replay there that tied this thing up at 10 to 10. If you're just joining us, Burlington Notre Dame leads Gladbrook Rhinebeck two sets to one. We're in the fourth set, playing to 25 win by two in the 1A championship. Well, I think one thing that you would love to see when you are a college coach is just a competitive individual. Absolutely. And you can find that competitiveness. I mean, you can find it in playing uh, checkers and other things, but seeing how they respond. And also what kind of teammate they are. Right. Yeah, you need to be a good teammate. You need to be coachable, You need, which, which basically means to take coaching. So if a coach tells me something, I can't, like, stomp my feet and stomp off and say I'm not doing that. You have to be able to listen and, and take what they say and then put it to good use. And that is hard to do. Who likes to be told they're, they're not right? <laughs> Can you tell me what I'm bad at and right, what I need right. to do better? But if you have that piece of it, you're going to get way better. 
and coaches are going to want to work with you. Barb Randall, Eric Braley on the call here, broadcasting live from the Iowa PBS studios in Johnston, Iowa. What you are watching on your screen is happening live at the Alliant Energy Powerhouse in downtown Cedar Rapids. Four trophies have been handed out. Ankeny, Cedar Rapids Xavier, Osage, Dyke New Hartford, and who's it gonna be in class 1A? Gladbrook Rhinebeck leads in this must win fourth set by two. Make it one as Burlington Notre Dame gets the point under first year head coach Mike Davis. And I think I wanna, and you said this, uh, we were joking earlier on when we're like, it's his first year, like he should retire yeah. right off into the sunset. Yeah. If, he, if he holds on, if he wins tonight, yep. I'm out. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this. Because it is just so many variables go into just getting to state, let alone making a run here in Cedar Rapids. There's a look at the replay and the celebration after another point for the Rebels. Leading by two as we're Again, midway point of this critical fourth set. A must win for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Nice placement. And Paula Kelly, she's been around a while. 150 career victories, 12 years of coaching, five at the current school, which is her alma mater. And 32 years ago, she was on the team that also played for the state championship. The Rebels did lose that title match, but now she's back as a coach. Well, it certainly would be fun to coach your alma mater. Nice tip over the block there. Those haven't been working for a while, and so they're trying to, again, bring it back out. Got her, caught her off guard. And the defenders coming up expecting a big swing. But in reality, the ball sails over their head for a point. There's a big swing on the outside, down for the kill, using that sideline. 18 kills now for Sari Keel. Well, and that ball was pretty much threading the needle on that line. And we, when we tell players to hit line, we don't mean that they have to actually hit the line. They have two or three feet, feet of an alley that they can aim for. And that usually does pretty well, but it doesn't have to be as literal as what we say, but she got that one. Into the net goes the volleyball on the side of Burlington Notre Dame. Here's the replay. A four point lead for the Rebels and a timeout on the court. We'll keep it here. As you look, Barb, not sure exactly the reason, but this championship week is actually a week earlier than it has been in the recent Yeah, half. and that, ha that has been planned since last year. That is not anything due to COVID or anything else. That, that was planned. The interesting part is when I played so many years ago, it was actually another week earlier even. We played on Halloween and November 1st, and then it has been moved back two weeks and now moved forward a week. I don't know what, what it's going to be next year, so it'll be interesting to see. And we talk about those multi-sport. Well, are you playing a winter sport? Are you getting ready for basketball? Do you get a couple yeah, days off? Those and then start you jump Monday. In? Pre I, they've been talking about it at the tournament. Basketball starts Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only Thursday, so right, you got a right. three-day weekend yeah. to, to go yeah. and get ready. Nobody's thinking about basketball that's playing this volleyball match right now for either Gladbrook, Rhinebeck, or Burlington. All focus, energy dialed in on what is happening here in this fourth set. The Rebels need to win the fourth set. They're in a position to do so, leading by four. But Burlington Notre Dame is not going anywhere as they're quite capable of putting a run together here. Well, and if 
they win this set, they're done. Yeah. They don't have to keep working so hard. So they want to try and do everything they can to not let this go five. That was a nice attempt at saving that ball. It was really tight to the net, and she didn't have anything she could do except try and kind of guide it back in, but she couldn't, couldn't make that happen. It was going over anyway. Katie Stevens with the serve. You see, time after time, these players diving on the court. Sacrificing, trying to do everything in their power to keep that ball up and get it to a teammate. That one gets through. So I really think that Gladbrook Rhinebeck has done a great job of adjusting their defense to take that corner shot away from Burlington Notre Dame. Those shots, those um, attacks are not going down like they did earlier in this match. Near collision on the side of Notre Dame. The Nikes miscommunication again. You don't see it happen often. Especially at this point in the season. And the Rebels, they've had a great year. Their football team, boys cross country team, and volleyball all qualified for state this fall. And sometimes that school spirit that those yeah. classes kind of motivate each other to, yep. to perform even better. Or compete with each other to see, hey, we did this. Can you guys do it too? <laughs> Reaching for high levels. And Gladbrook Rhinebeck looks again so much more confident and, and just really ready to go and seize this opportunity. That's 19, 19 kills for Sari Keel. Well, and we talked about defense winning championships, and I really think that Gladbrook Rhinebeck's defense has come up several notches from where it started in that first set. Do you think it was because it was early on in the championship match that it just wasn't to par or just things being done again more attention to detail well, probably a checking little bit out of your yeah. opponent who you haven't seen ever right. before right probably a little bit of both and then once you see your opponent you can make some adjustments and try and get those attacks to funnel to your where your people are and so but i also think that they're actually putting more effort in and defense is about effort yeah and so when you start flying after balls, then that means I'm gonna start doing that. And when we both start doing that, then, you know, Johnny's gonna do it. And, and it just becomes a thing where everybody's doing it and then you start getting balls up. Well, head coach Paula Kelly said, you know, Sari has been consistent for us all season long. Well, tonight, 19 <laughs> kill, kills. Kills. Uh, ki <laughs> but different kids come and step up. You know, in the semifinals, it was Ava last night. In the quarters, it was Megan Cooley. At any given time, a couple kids can step up and come through with a lot of kills for us. And that's big to have the depth and not just rely on one person to it's carry the burden. It's a lot of pressure for one person. 20 to 16, Rebels with the lead. 21 16. Gladbrook, Rhinebeck. Nine kills now for Megan Cooley. Well, and I love how Gladbrook Rhinebeck uses their middles. You know, they, they really have done a decent job of getting the ball to the middle of the court. That one's down. A nice quick kind of turn and burn where the body was focusing toward the center. Quickly turned the body and throttled it down. That's Maisie Belger. Libero to serve. She's done a great job. Artman, a senior. There is Artman. 4.48. Digs per set. Getting set for the serve. Into the block. 
Things are starting to get interesting. You noticing that? Yeah. I'm seeing it over here. I know we're about 30 feet apart watching on our monitors, but things are getting a little interesting here. The Rebels are close to that 25 point mark, but the Nikes are doing everything in the power to make sure this thing doesn't go five. And it's kind of been starting, when, when that happens for one team or the other, it's kind of been starting with that front row defense, the blocking, they're getting more touches, they're getting more you know, hands on the balls and, and keeping the ball on the other side of the court, and that can really do good things for you if you never get to touch the ball. <laughs> the side out the Rebels needed just happened. It not only gives them a point, but it gives them a chance to, to put the pressure on with their serving in their offense. Olsen served up a good one. Blocked. Nice hustle. Oh, my. A good opportunity. Unable to cash in for Gladbrook Rhinebeck. But if it weren't for that defensive play, which neither team would have done earlier in this match. They just weren't going for balls like that. They wouldn't have gotten that point. That was a great save. Probably this is a pretty, have a few bruises. Pretty solid high level of volleyball we're seeing at this class 1A level here between these teams. Wanting it so bad and the Rebels get the point. Now needing two more. 23-20. Stuffed, but it goes out of bounds. Last touch off the block, off the hands of Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Down, but not out. Played at 25, win by how many, Barb? Uh, two. <laughs> if I don't know it that might, by now, I got problems. It might get there. Belger served it. Returned. Tipped and down on the side of Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Fighting their way all the way back. That is 20 kills. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Katie Stevens, 20 kills tonight. And her teammate, yeah, Josie Benz, a... says 20 kills. Another teammate has 14. Gabby Deary. 23-22, Gladbrook Rhinebeck has had the lead, but it's starting to evaporate, and now it has. We so, are tied. I've been trying to decide what I'm rooting for. Do, am I rooting for this situation where now it's win by two, and it continues that way till somebody wins by two, or do I want a fifth set? I love them both. <laughs> Here we go, a timeout called at 23-23. Yeah, a couple of years ago, we did the Iowa State, Barb. You and I announced the Iowa State, yeah. you and I volleyball. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the final score was like 140 to 142. <laughs> it just... I, <laughs> I do think it was like 40 to 38 or 40. I mean, it hit 40. That's kind of the fun thing with the, you know, volleyball and baseball and softball. There's no clock. It's not like, oh, right. time's up, the game's done. Right. This thing could go on. And what a fight you're seeing here. Uh, Burlington Notre Dame, they could have just said, all right, Gladbrook, Rhinebeck, you win the fourth, let's settle this in the fifth. Okay, so do you want to talk about my philosophy now? Let's hold that okay. thought. Okay. If we get there, okay, no, yeah, we're tied. Okay, so I just think we're going to see the best volleyball that right we've now. seen right now, and I just think, wouldn't it be fun to always just play, play till somebody wins by two? I mean, you'd have to play way more sets. Yeah. But I just think you get such great volleyball the at this point. Yes, there. I love it. And you can't play timid. No. Nope. You can't just nope. lollipop, nope. send it on over. You got to stay yep. and maintain aggressiveness. Yep. There's an I aggressive love it. Aggressive swing. Joust at the net. And now in system with options. Notre Dame. But it's Gladbrook Rhinebeck that gets the point. Holy buckets. That brings up set point for the Rebels, who again had a lead, never gave up the lead completely, and now if they get this point, they get the set point. And we go to five. And then we go to the fifth and final set. 
but it doesn't happen Here on that we play. Go. <laughs> 24-24, and <laughs> it is no longer set point for Gladbrook Rhinebeck, and it is an opportunity to serve and be on the offensive attack in Burlington Notre Dame. Oh, and this is a, I shouldn't say it. I don't want to jinx anybody. I was just going to say this is a good. Barb, we're in Johnson, a Iowa. You're not jinxing anyone. A good rotation, a good server for Notre Dame. They've had good luck out of this rotation. This unfolding in downtown Cedar Rapids, where the 5A, the 4A, the 3A, and the 2A championship matches have already been played. Trying to cap off the day, and that's a 2-0 run for Burlington Notre Dame. They now have the opportunity to win the set and the match if they get one more point right here. Match point for a school that has never been to the state volleyball tournament under a first year head coach. Didn't play the first couple of weeks due to the pandemic. Got a bye in the first round. 25-24. Good pass, here's the set, the middle attack. Won't go down. Gladbrook Rhinebeck to the outside. It's out of bounds! And for the first time ever, Burlington Notre Dame are your class 1A state champions, winning in four over Gladbrook Rhinebeck in a wild finish. Here's another look at the final match point. Cue the celebration, the tears. That was a wild 1A championship. Mike Davis needs to retire in his post-game press conference. <laughs> in my first year coaching, I took a school to state that has never been there, and we won the whole thing. An incredible story. <laughs> An incredible story. That team faced about as much adversity as you can possibly have jam-packed into one volleyball season. And at the end of the day, they are standing tall as the number one team. Ankeny, Cedar Rapids Xavier, Osage, Dyke New Hartford, and Burlington Notre Dame. They are the champions on this championship Thursday, November 5th. Some incredible individual stats for, for both teams. Let's honor the all tournament awards team. Our members of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Board of Directors Gary Ebling, Russ Adams, Jim Bomer, and Travis Fleschner. Presenting awards to the class 2020 1A all tournament team is John Sambothy, regional manager for Iowa Farm Bureau. Fans, your 2020 Class 1A All-Tournament team. From Burlington, Notre Dame, Josie Bentz. From Gladbrook, Rhinebeck, Ava Wyatt. From Galen Catholic, Cadence Goble. From Council Bluff St. Albert, Ali Petri. From Janesville, Gabby Gergen. From Gladbrook, Rhinebeck, Sari Keel. Your captain for the all tournament team from Burlington, Notre Dame, Katie Stevens. Katie Stevens finishes with a match high 21 kills.
Josie Benz had 20. Gabby Deary had 14 great individual performances from all those ladies here in this state tournament. Congratulations on the all tournament team honors for each of them. Katie Stevens yesterday after that semifinal victory. Again, I quote, I had no idea what to expect this volleyball season. <laughs> she is now the captain of the all tournament team and she is bringing the school's first ever state title back to her school. The Gladbrook Reinbrick Rebels and Coach Paula Kelly. And now, your 2020 Class 1A champions, Coach Mike Davis and the Burlington Notre Dame Nikes. Congratulations to the Burlington Notre Dame Nikes. Well deserving, hard fought victory. And bring that one back. You know, the 1A, that's the time when the last person out of town turn off the lights. Everyone go watch this. <laughs> and, you know, with the pandemic, not sure if everyone made the trip or not, but uh, can be very proud of the effort that those girls did every night this season and, and to get to this spot. Well, and what a fun match to watch as both teams hadn't been here. Hopefully they enjoyed it. It's hard when you win that last match, especially when you go in, you know, being on top and, and supposed to win it. And it's a tough match, but it's still a great season. It's still a lot of fun. Burlington, Notre Dame, I mean, seriously, Coach Mike Davis <laughs> needs to retire. One year and I'm the state champion. Yeah. What I'm done. Story. I've mastered this sport. And that is what I love about sports. You can't write that ending. So huge debt of gratitude and thanks to the Iowa PBS crew. You got a bunch of people in Cedar Rapids and a bunch of people here in Johnston in the studio bringing you all the sights and sounds of this tournament. Congratulations to Ankeny, Cedar Rapids Xavier, Osage, Dyke New Hartford, and Burlington Notre Dame the champions from the Iowa Girls High School State Volleyball Tournament. For my good friend, Barb Randall, so long, and we'll see you next year. Good night, everyone. Funding provided by Fairway Meat and Grocery is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls State Volleyball Championships. Fairway believes in supporting the places Iowans learn, work, live, and play. Congratulations to all the schools and student athletes in this year's games. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community.